Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, is in New York this week. The wartime leader spoke to the UN's General Assembly, pleading with the international body to remove Russia from its Security Council. Each decade, Russia starts a new war. Parts of Moldova and Georgia remain occupied. Russia turns Syria into ruins. And if not Russia, the chemical weapons would have never been used there in Syria. Russia has almost swallowed Belarus. It is obviously threatening Kazakhstan and other Baltic states. And the goal of the present war against Ukraine is to turn our land, our people, our lives, our resources into a weapon against you again, the international rules-based order. As a permanent member of the UN Security Council, Russia is charged with keeping the peace internationally, a charge Vladimir Putin flatly discarded when he ordered the illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014 and then the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Zelensky may have shared some strong words with the UN, but he needs the international community so the tongue lashing is about all he can afford to give. New data shows from January of last year through July of this year, Ukraine received hundreds of billions of dollars in military, financial, and humanitarian aid from foreign countries. The United States has given the most of any one country, but the EU's total commitments to Ukraine are now surpassing those of the U.S. There are questions, though, about whether all that aid is getting to the people who need it the most. Recent revelations in Ukrainian media showed graft and military spending there. Zelensky promised international allies and partners none of the grafting involved foreign aid. Alexei Reznikov stepped down as Ukraine's defense minister a few weeks ago amid the allegations. And this week, all six deputy defense ministers submitted their resignations as well. All of this does not mean international and U.S. aid to Ukraine will stop, though. After all, there is still a war going on and innocent civilians are being massacred. President Biden is working to get an additional aid package pushed through Congress worth more than $20 billion. And the much-anticipated M1A1 Abrams tanks should be defending Ukrainian soil any day now. Ukraine's counteroffensive is definitely starting to pick up the pace on multiple fronts and in multiple domains. Near Bakhmut, Ukraine's armed forces drove Russian troops out of two nearby villages and continued to encircle the positions in Bakhmut. The city isn't much more than rubble at this point, but Russian propaganda has touted the importance of the city so much and the Russian armed forces expended so many resources in capturing it, Ukraine taking it back would deal another devastating blow to Russian logistics and morale. The Institute for the Study of War said Russia's troops in and around Bakhmut are likely battle-weary. The ISW said it will be extremely hard for Russian troops in the area to get resupplied, and Russian defenses will continue to degrade. Winter is fast approaching, though, which means troop movements will be impeded. Ukraine says its goal is still to push through Russian defensive lines to the Sea of Azov by the end of the year, cutting Russian forces in half and opening up most occupied territories to Ukrainian airstrikes. For more unbiased, straight fact reporting about the war in Ukraine, download the Straight Arrow News app today or log on to san.com. Thanks for watching. In this time of media mistrust, Straight Arrow News is on a mission to bring you unbiased, fact-based reporting. So to make sure you get journalism that you trust, like and subscribe to Straight Arrow News below. It goes a long way in telling YouTube we're the kind of news that you want to see more of. And for all of our content, go to straightarrownews.com.